Yeah, yeah, it's time to live your life. Derek Gant, show them how to take it to the highest height. Hey, this is more than financial advice. Show you how to take control. Time to get your money right. Uh, money management, I know that we all need financial independence. Yeah, it seems out of reach, but you can make it happen. Now it's time for some action. Helping you with your finances. Yeah, we got a passion. Hey, ain't no limit. Uh, now it's time to get it. Uh, you deserve to have a life. How you want to live it? Uh, secrets to success. Now it's time to get it right. Yeah, I'm talking all about that 24K life. Let's go. This the vibe. For real, I'm trying to tell you. Tell me if you ready to take it to the next level. Uh, Derek Ant, talking fitness and investment. Change your mindset and show you how it's all connected. Ain't no need to hesitate or delay. Only way to live life is a 24K. Hey, Derek Ant, let him know. Let's go. Hey, it's Derek Gant, 24K Life, and I am here with Devin Gant. How you doing? He is the real estate guru for anybody under 30. He probably will say under 40, but uh, most of his clients are looking to buy their first house, maybe their first investment property, um, or they're transitioning to that, that dream home, that second spot. So we were talking about that, and what came up was credit. And, you know, I have a unique view of credit. My view about credit is that since they won't tell me how they calculate your score, which we're going to talk about, since they won't tell you how they calculate the score, screw them. Just right. make a whole bunch of money and just go buy what you want outright. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my strategy. Mm -hmm. My last car, I just wrote a check for it. Like, screw you. Right. But that doesn't mean that most of people can do that. So because most people are, uh, are, are drastically aware of where they are with their credit and where they want to be and where they should be, uh, we are going to talk about that to give you an inside look about where you are, where you should be, so that you can analyze it, figure out how to level up if that's what you need to do. Or maybe you need to teach your youngsters or others in your life about credit and how to make it better. So when you're looking, we're going to talk about credit in general, but specifically when you're looking for a house, mm -hmm. let's just start off with the good stuff. What do people need to know? So first thing you need to know is that FHA just dropped down to 620. What's, so, what is FHA? Is that the mortgage that everybody gets or is that something special? It's First Time Home Buyers Association. Okay, the First Time Home Buyers Association, mm -hmm. FHA. So a lot of people say it's great and praise it. A lot of people say that you're wasting your time. Who are money. these people? You say these, a lot. You, you, so say, you know, they are, say, who is they? <laughs> lenders. Lenders, the people that people are that are charging you up the yin yang say it's good or bad. It's really split down the middle. Okay. Because there are programs that go with FHA that can help somebody stop start at zero and work okay. their way up. Right. And there are also people who just gonna walk you in and say, Hey, you're gonna get this FHA loan and you're not gonna know anything. I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know and have at it. But there are a lot of fees that come with FHA, uh -huh. like PMI, which is a mortgage insurance that you have to get if you don't pay 20% down, uh -huh. which is also why FHA sucks. If you go conventional, you can go as low as 3.5% down and save a lot more money up front. Yeah, but you know, you say save, you still need to put the money down, but you're wasting money in fees is what you're saying. Correct. Yeah, I think my first house... Um, yeah, the, our first house. I shouldn't say my first house. You were there. Um, what we did was we went and we did FHA mm -hmm. because I remember we had to put 20%. I'm sorry, we, we didn't have the 20% down. And when they told me what it was going to cost me without having the 20% down, mm -hmm. I was hell-bent. And I think after the first 12 months, we were at 20% and they got mm -hmm. rid of it. So right. is that still the case? You yes. can you can start with... Uh, Less than less than your twenty percent down, but you can aggressively get there. Absolutely, and they'll take it away, right? Yep. So here's the here's the rub with PMI. You have to buy their insurance, and then you have to go out and buy your insurance. So you have two insurances. Yep. Your right? homeowner's insurance as well. Yeah. So it's a, it's a rip. Yep. But so you got to do it. What it is. If All you right. don't have it, sometimes your stronghold into getting FHA. All right. Um, especially if you have a low credit score and you can't go conventional. All right, so before we jump into credit score, you were telling me, right before we turned the camera on, you were telling me that um, that there was some income requirement. What was the mm -hmm. income requirement that's needed for somebody to buy a house, period? Mm -hmm. So you have to be make $2,000 a month uh, 
generally for the past two years. Generally or specifically? Generally. Because so they'll work with you. They'll work with you if you, you got if you got 18 months. And, so if, and, and, <laughs> if you have a work history for the past two years, uh-huh. you said, hey, I just got this promotion and I'm going to be making this amount for here on out. Yeah. They'll work with you. But you can't. It's got to be the same job, or you can say, "Hey, I was working at the King, nope. and I was, I was the burgers was yeah, good." It could but be anywhere, oh, as anywhere. long as you have shown that. So you it's not as bad as I, it's money. not as bad as you as you years. you made me believe, or you not that I you didn't <laughs> right. make me believe, but that I kind of gathered. So as long as you've been working mm-hmm. and you have a stable work history, yep. Now, is that COVID safe? I mean, you know, there was a lump sum of time that people were off for, if, for if COVID. You mean COVID safe that they don't care that you didn't work for a while. Yeah. Yeah, they care. That's a it's rip. Not COVID safe, man. That's a rip, man. You ain't have a job. The system is structured for rich people to get more rich. They're get consistent employment. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not gonna go into that. But the only we're here. safety that you have yeah? is if you were a student for one of those two years. <laughs> so it. you got hacked because of COVID, and you went to school. And does it matter what age? Nope. You went to school, then you got a job that was at least. Making twenty five thousand dollars or more, mm-hmm. uh, bring home is that twenty two k a month? Bring home two, yep, or is it gross? So they, I'm not sure. That's a great question. Oh, uh, we got to find That's out. And let you know. Question. We'll we're gonna let you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. So is it? We got to find out. Is it gross or is it net? So let's just say it's gross. Okay. Most of the calculations that bankers use are gross. Our gross income. So you need two thousand dollars a month. You need consistent employment. Uh, and you need a two-year work history, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's talk about credit. What kind of credit do you need to uh, get that FHA home? What did you say it was? 620. 620. Just drop down. 620. Praise wow. be. Praise be. Praise <laughs> be to the realtors, Dude. not praise be to you. Because if you go in there with a 620, they're going to give you the highest interest rate they offer. Yeah. You're not going to get the yeah. best rates. No. But you are a homeowner. You do get the right to the interest rate off, right? Mm-hmm. On your taxes. So it's not all bad. It's not all good, but it's not all bad. If you have some cash in your pocket, you can pay it off in points, which a point is a thousand dollar fee that you can drop your interest rate down and they're only gonna give you this one. This sounds like gambling points. Like you taking points on games or what? <laughs> I mean, come on man. Give me, they say give me a point and I'll knock it down. That sounds like gambling, doesn't it? It sounds like loan sharking. <laughs> I mean, hey, these guys, they know the game and they know it well. And yeah, they know yeah. that if you have some cash in your pocket, there are some ways around bringing this All interest right. rate down. So before we jump solely into just general credit, regardless of what you're looking to do with it, you're saying that, like what I always say is the more money, the better is basically yes, what you're saying. Absolutely. So you want to go into a home purchase um, with at least, what, 5% in your pocket? Mm-hmm. FHA, yes. they're going to need three at least, mm-hmm. and then you're going to need some money for closing costs and other things. Yeah, and if you don't pay that 20% off, like you said, they're going to charge you up the wazoo until you yeah. get to that 20% threshold. And yeah, have you ever been charged off. up the wazoo? It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've gotten wazooed before. Uh, so, that's why we make lots of money, and that's why you save lots of money, and that's why you are very very direct and particular with what you want to buy, where you want to put your money. I will tell you this much. Did you know this? Can You You might be able to guess this. and this mm-hmm. is, I, I probably shouldn't do this on TV, but let me, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm a terrible guesser. Well, <laughs> anyway, what percentage of Canadian households, right, mm-hmm. homeowners, so people that go buy, buy their home, what percentage of them actually write a check for it and what percent finance? So just what percent... You can just say what percent out and out right by their home. You know that number? Twenty. It's over sixty percent. What? It's over sixty <laughs> percent of Canadians what? when they go get a house, they pay for it. Let me tell you. Here's what they do. If you could imagine their average home sale isn't four, five, six hundred thousand dollars. Okay. They buy what they can afford, which is amazingly smart. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they don't keep up with the Joneses, they don't own overspend, mm-hmm. they own their home, and then when they have more money, they sell the home, they take that money, and they take the additional money they accumulated, and they buy up. Hmm. They don't go out and, and overtly finance, they're not debt ridden like we are here in America. Yeah. Well, I also want to attest to your point when you said cash is king, 
about if you even have that. I didn't say that, but I always say it. So that's what he's referring to. If you do have that 620 score, yeah. if you have the money to pay for a house that six hundred thousand yeah. dollars, you can do that with your six twenty as long as you have that down payment money. But if you're gonna if you so you don't need to spend it, you're saying? I'm saying that no matter people always assume that if I have a six twenty score, then I can only get a house of this amount. You can get any amount you want as long as you have the down payment for it and as long as you can pay it. Yeah, but you have to make the income for it. You can't. You have to show your no. debt to income ratio. Yeah, yeah. You, you got to have a good debt to income ratio. Yeah, but so that's all about cash. Like I'm saying, if you have the well, cash for it, then yeah. But if you have that kind of cash, just go buy the house and forget the bank, and forget the twenty percent. Yeah. So we're talking to people who most likely I'm are, just are sitting on a couple hundred. There, well, I, I'm sure you all appreciate that. You're not building your credit, and yeah. you've been sitting on some money. You said, "Crap, rats! It's time for me to start building on my credit." What I'm going to do with all this cash? Yeah. Uh, you can do something like that. All right. Well, I feel you on that one. But, you know, a whole different show we're going to talk about what to do with a lump sum of money. And it's not do that with it. Mm-hmm. At least not solely. So I'd rather see you build your credit by, you know, buying the house and making the payments and right. getting your credit built up. Then you can refinance at a better rate. Yeah. Right? You can Absolutely. refinance at a better rate. And you can Absolutely. get a different house or you can take that house and be, make it become a, an investor home. And then you can go buy your next home. There's lots of creative ways to do some things with real cash. So let's talk about credit. There are three credit reporting agencies. They are Experian, Mm -hmm. Equifax, Mm -hmm. TransUnion. You're not going (laughs) to help me here. He's just looking at me like, "Uh uh-huh. Listen, if I say something wrong. That's okay. We all say things wrong periodically. TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Those are the three primary um, companies that report credit in our consumer world and they do not will not show you tell you or even get close to helping you understand how they calculate your report sound fair to you yes that sounds fair that they won't tell you how they calculate your score your assessment sounds fair my assessment (laughs) sounds fair yes yeah they do so if you pull your credit and you get all three reports from all three, mm-hmm. I promise you, you have three different scores. It is so interesting that one time, I had two different credit reporting agencies, one from my bank account and one from something else. I pulled reports from both, so I had six reports. Okay. Not one score matched. Right. Even the Equifax to Equifax from two different places, the scores didn't match. And so they don't tell you why. And they don't tell you why. Right. So. When you get frustrated, and I had a client call me um, last week, and uh, what's today? Yeah, last week, and they said, you know, when I pulled my score on Credit Karma, it said one number, and when I went to go get a car, it was 80 points less, and they were trying to figure out what the hell. So I explained to them that when you go to Credit Karma, um, they will give you, it's about, in my opinion, and I've been looking at those reports for a long time, okay. they're about 85% accurate. Okay. okay, That 15% uncertainty can really hurt or can really help. It can really surprise you or it can really hurt you. I've seen both of them. Because they don't calculate it, they don't tell you how they calculate it, it's, it's going to be a coin flip. But I can give some insight as to how they calculate your score. You ready? I'm ready. All right. So, 35% of your score is calculated from your payment history. Okay. Now, for somebody like yourself, you know, at your age, you started having a car payment, you start paying your insurance, Mm -hmm. you pay your cell phone, you don't have a house payment yet, you got an investment property, you know, so they're gonna use your history. For older people like myself, it's easy. You got a long history of paying bills. So they're going to look at your history and see how accurate that is. How long have you paid your bills on time um, and in full? They're going to calculate that. Mm-hmm. They're going to calculate 30% of your score to how much debt yep. you actually have outstanding. So how much money do you actually owe? That's 30% of your score. 
And then 15% is how long you've had credit history. So I've had a credit history for 30 years. So the better my history, the longer the period of time, the higher my score. It's really interesting that younger people are, it's really difficult for them to get an 800 because they don't have the length of time that it takes to give them that validation on that. So 15%, yes. How does that work? If I have, if I had two more years under my belt, how many more points would I have? (laughs) Huh. Given the fact that they will not tell us how they calculate the score, <laughs> I can't answer that. Okay. I, okay. I, you... I can give you the percentages of what they say in the range, but right. those are the details they're not disclosing. Mm-hmm. So you don't, you just don't know. So you know, as a professional consultant, I can't say, well, hey, in, in two years your score is going to jump by this because you have a longer history. Right. If you don't have any credit, if you don't have any charge cards, if you don't have a car loan, you know that nothing's going to happen for two years. Right. If you just got a car, something would happen if you paid it on time. If you got a car and a house, something greater is going to happen. You see what I mean? So Absolutely. they're not telling you, and based on the circumstances of who you are and where you are in your on your road, depends on you know what effect that's that's really going to take. Hmm. So two more new credit. If you get if people are still issuing you credit, now that is not a green light to go out and get new credit cards or to go buy a car. But if you do have new credit, that's 10% of your score, and um, your credit mix is 10%. So when we talk about mix, how much of it is, you know, like a home loan, a student loan, uh, revolving credit cards. So your mix is also going to determine um, 10% of your score. So when you take a look at all those factors, you can kind of figure out which ones you can can maneuver around and which ones you can't. So it's imperative to understand the most basics and then look at how you can tweak it. Because you can tweak it a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have any credit cards and you have, let's say you have a 680 credit score, you don't have any credit cards. Well, if you have a really smart money coach (laughs) or you are pretty pretty responsible okay okay you can go out and get a credit card and you can start using it to get your gasoline or to get your uh, to pay your cable bill or to pay your phone bill you can use it for what i call static expenses static meaning they don't change right phone bill is going to change a little bit but not grossly um you can use it to pay some people let you pay your car note on it so you get your credit card you put these bills on your credit card um all of a sudden you have new credit Okay. You're paying it off every 30 days because they're the same bills you were already going to pay. And all of a sudden, that activity bumps you up. Okay, quick question. Doesn't have to be quick. All right. We got question. plenty of time. So when I first got my uh, debit card with PNC, okay, I went up there and I bought some gas. And it said credit or debit. Mm-hmm. But this is a credit card. It's a debit card. It's a debit card. I mean. Right. So I'm thinking, how does PNC give me credit? And if so, how much do I have and why didn't anybody tell me? Yeah, they give you they give you credit, and the credit is the exact amount that's in your account. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? So it's not a credit card, it is a debit card. The gas pump is saying, hey, is this card a credit card or a debit card? Mm-hmm. Or do you want to use it as a debit or a credit? Because the banking institutions will transact that fee mm-hmm. differently for a debit card than a credit card. Okay. So would it be better for me to always say credit? I'm going to take it out of my bank anyway. You know, I, I believe that the debit charge is going to be less expensive because when you use it as a credit, they're using it as a merchant credit, and I think that's a little bit more. Okay. So I would use it as a debit card. Okay. Okay? Mm-hmm. But it has nothing to do with building credit, which you might think if you and click the credit button, I wanted to know. that you know, you're building some credit. You're not. It's not. That doesn't happen. They're just charging you more. They're just charging <laughs> you more. Sucks. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. They're just charging you more. You're not getting any, any other credit reporting benefits. Mm. So credit card companies and crump some companies, in order to help uh, some of the less fortunate, and we'll let you decide who those people are, uh, are actually starting to... Why are, you, why are you looking down like I'm talking about somebody? I'm just saying. Um, are, are starting to allow... Uh, utility bills to be used as part of building your found your fundamental credit because you can't go out and secure a credit card because you know you got bad credit or you got bad history or you owe some people um, 
they're they're starting to do that. So it's starting to become incumbent on people to pay their utilities on time, mm -hmm. not only their their insurances and their and their car payments and their home payments and their rents, because some of these things, some or all these things, at some point come into play in paying your bills mm -hmm. and building credit, and paying your bills. So you know, what are some of the things that that um, people can do? Do you think to to boost their credit pretty quick? Pay off debt. Pay off debt, right? If you have, if you're carrying debt on your credit card, let's say you have a two thousand dollar credit limit, and you get two thousand dollars on your card because you just left Neiman Marcus a couple months ago, and you went on a little weekend excursion, and you are at the two thousand dollar limit. That is going to ding against you every month that you're at that limit. They want to see that all the way down to 600 bucks or less. They want to see 30% of what your available credit limit or less for that to be a good thing on your credit. Hmm. Okay? Of course, it's even better if you pay it off every 30 days. Okay. So, like, for me, I use American Express. American Express don't play around with most of their cards. You got to pay the full balance every 30 days. So... I got in the habit of doing that. I don't even carry a balance on my card. Sometimes I use the card just to get some points, mm -hmm. um, and I pay it off after three or four days. Okay. So um, you can, great answer, pay down some debt, and you can increase your debt to income ratio, which will help you on the card. Now, let's say for instance, you say to yourself, I wanna be super diligent. I wanna be a great steward, a good consumer, and I am going to pay cash for everything. I'm going to cut up my cards. Mm -hmm. What is that going to do to your report or your score? It's going to kill it. <laughs> right now. You have no credit to. You got no credit. Think about this. It's the biggest scam known to man. You're going to be a good steward. You're not going to owe anybody any money. You're not going to have to worry about uh, paying somebody back because you're paying as you go. Mm -hmm. And they ding you for it. They say you're that is not good. And right. it's not good because... They want you to hold that debt. They it's want you to. Twenty-two. They they want you to buy more stuff mm -hmm. that you can't afford. That you got to carry a note on. And they want you fighting with all your might to just go to, to work. Show that you can do. Just to pay it. Just to pay it. Just to keep you in the game. Because the more you buy, the more people that that own Best Buy and own Amazon, the more money they make. Mm -hmm. All right. And if you're not out there spending that money that you make, then they're not making that money. Mm -hmm. And now they're normal people, and they don't want to be normal people. They want to be, you know, they want to have eight hundred billion dollars that they can never spend, so they can go to the moon and see if anybody left any cheese up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth, right? You have come to 24K Life to get a better life, right? So how do you get around that? You get around it by having the card, using it for static bills, right? Things that are constantly the same. You're going to spend that money on your car note anyway. Pay your car note on your card, right? So the car note gets paid on time. You're using the card and you're paying off the card. No more money went out of your pocket. Don't use it to go shopping. Don't use it for frivolous things. Impulse purchasing is killing America, right? As well as keeping America's rich people rich, but it's killing the middle class and everybody else. So if you want more, be wise about how you do it. You don't need a department store card. You need a major credit card. American Express, MasterCard, would Visa. Would what help? Like a TJ Maxx card. Why? I can go to TJ Maxx and buy anything I want with my mm -hmm. American Express card. Okay, what it does is it helps TJ Maxx because they get to sell more product than they would have had you not got the card. Yep. Right? Yeah. So, you know, and then they're the financiers, so they're getting the interest. So they're, they're getting what you bought. You bought those shoes, and you bought the sweaters. TJ Maxx, so you bought some pillows, and you, you bought some candles. And, uh, the rates on top and, and they're and so they got the money for you buying the stuff, and then they're getting interest on that stuff. And you're holding that debt for years. People hold that debt for years. The average household has over seventy five hundred dollars of credit card debt that they're carrying. Mm. Average American household. Only 500 in a bank. Uh, yeah, well, what he's saying is that the average house, 85% of the average households don't have $500 anywhere. Anywhere. Check to check. Check to check. Uh, <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> I'm looking for my next check, man. Man. So, you said that paying off bills can now, like your, uh, your utilities. Okay. Utility bills. That can be used to help you. 
Yeah. Should you use credit cards for that? Or should you just regular paying them off is not helping you? Well, they're static. Mm-hmm. So you could do that if uh, if you can make a payment. I don't even know if you can pay utility. That money just comes straight out of my checking account. But if okay. you can use it for that, you could. I, I normally like to tell people to use their credit card for their cell phone bill. Okay. Use it for your car insurance. Use it for um, your cable payment. So mm-hmm. automatically, you know, gets paid on your on your credit card. So uh, ideally. You know, you can't put your mortgage on there. If you could put your mortgage on there, but that would be manna from heaven because you'd be getting all kind of points. Right. But they won't let you do that. But most, almost everything else you can put on the card. But you can't do that until you get to the place to where you're even, meaning all your bills are paid, your credit card balances are zero. Okay. Zero. Then you can start that strategy. Because if you start putting them on the card, and your right. cards are zero, expenses. you're just stacking problems right. on top of problems. Okay, so that leads into my next question, which is paying off debt with credit cards. What kind of debt? Let's just say you owe your uh, car, your car people about $2,000 to pay off this car note, and you got back pay, and you want to pay it off. Yeah, no, because if, you know, let's say an average car loan is, is six or seven percent interest mm-hmm. but the average credit card is 21 percent interest mm-hmm. so you're just paying more for the car okay so, so even if you have the two thousand five hundred in hand don't cash pay, yeah cash and you want to raise your credit score and say hey i got it might as well pay it on my credit and then pay off the credit no if you if you if you have two twenty five hundred dollars cash you owe two thousand dollars on your vehicle and you have two thousand dollars of room on your credit card and you're trying to build your credit. Let's say we're just going to pay it off regardless. We got this money to pay it off. Okay, but your point was you're trying to build your credit. Correct. The fastest way, you listen to me, the fastest way in America to build your credit is to pay your card out on time. Okay. So no, you're not, you're not gonna pay the, the card, mm-hmm. you're not gonna spend the cash, you're gonna make sure you pay your card note on time. So just do it over time. Yep. So okay. just, just if you're trying to raise your credit score, mm-hmm. then that's the best way to do it. Okay. If you if you don't need to raise your credit score, and you're trying and you have like a card that gives you airline points, um, or some other point system that's going to benefit you, mm-hmm. then pay the car off with the card. Okay. And then take the cash and pay the card off. You get the points and you're still where you started from, but now you have points. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't do anything crazy to your credit score. Which... No, no, you it'll, it's going to improve your credit score. It's, it's, it's really a trick, right? Yeah. So the trick is this. And I know this is getting convoluted, but it's, it's the truth. The trick is this. Your credit score is going to drop because you no longer have a car loan. Mm. Okay, so when you have a car loan or a loan or credit, they say, oh, you're credit worthy. So all of a sudden that's gone. They don't look at it and go, oh, my God, you paid your note. What a great guy. Your credit worthy. They go, no, you don't have a loan anymore. They don't. They must not trust you anymore, <laughs> right? So your score is going to dip a little bit, hmm. and then you're going to see that the balance that you owe is paid off. So then it's going to pop up a little bit, hmm. okay? And then it's just going to be neutral because you're no longer paying that monthly payment. So now your score is not going to grow, gotcha. and you're going to sit there going, why isn't it going up? I paid the car off. I would have thought it's going to continue to jump, and it's not. Now it's not again. No reason to go out and get a new car note. Just stick with the credit. You know, don't get credit right. crazy. If you got a seven hundred. Um, yeah, you want a seven fifty. Yeah, you want an eight hundred. Yeah, you want an eight. But you can do anything you want to do in the universe with a seven seven twenty. Right. And get almost the best rates. Almost. Mm-hmm. So you know, just make wise decisions after you get to a certain point. Make sense. That's good info. Yeah. All right. Well, we are at our time. And that is our two cents on credit. We hope that you can use some of it. At the very minimum, share it with uh, the people in your world that need to know a lot more about credit. We have all kinds of tips and tricks at DerekGant.com to help you figure out. We have a a credit course that you can find at DerekGant.com and help you go through what you need to to get coached, to get a better credit score, to buy a better house, to buy, uh, to pay less. The rich pay less. That's why they have more. Pay less, keep more. I'm Derek Gant. Devin Gant. And we hope that you have an amazing day today. Thank you. Thank you. So, it's a scam. Scam. That's why you need cash as king. Yeah. So you can decide when you want to be scammed and when you don't. Mm-hmm.
That's tough. Right? I mean, that's really the... That's it's the stand, but you got to work the